So we are doubling this, so I am just doubling it because I. All right, while you're doing this, I'm gonna just talk to the camera and say, Alexandra's an old friend of mine. It's Yom Kippur. <laughs> I really shouldn't be baking on Yom Kippur, but I told her the story about how my dad, on his last Yom Kippur on earth, um, he had pancreatic cancer, and I said, I'm gonna come down and go to shul with you, and he said, no, fuck Yom Kippur, I'm going to the beach, which my dad has never said a curse word in his life. Or not gone. Or, you know, or not gone to shul, and so I have since then just made a decision that on Yom Kippur I'm gonna do something that my dad would like, that I would, would bring me pleasure, and that is the way that I'm celebrating my Yom Kippur, and saying sorry to everyone else, and sorry to God for, <laughs> for me. Making a clap of tea <laughs> on Yom Kippur. Okay, so. But I loved your dad. I'm really happy about this. Okay, so tell me what you're doing. And, and you don't have to eat it. No, yes. okay. Well, I might eat it. it. You're going to eat it later. You're going to eat it later. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it is the simplest thing in the world. So, I mean, we both lived in Paris for a long, long time, right. and we know that clap de can be terrible. Yes. It can be like those horrible little leaden squares that you get in cafeterias yeah. with, with cherries, and you have to fit the cherries in your mouth, and there's no good. Or it can be this like incredibly kind of custardy, tendery, souffle-like thing that's gorgeous. So I never make it with cherries, although you can. I make it with raspberries. Uh, that's great. And yeah. the reason I don't make it with cherries is because I don't like to pitch cherries. I'm very lazy. Who, like, who right? likes to pitch cherries? And raspberries are really pretty, and they're easy, and they're around all the time. Right. And I also make it with a little bit of almond flour, which you don't need to do, but I actually like that. Just add a texture to it. A tiny little almond yeah. taste, too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm going to tell you that I've made clafouti once, and you were there. I, I was? I hope you remember this. Oh, my God. I, I made clafouti, and I put it in the wrong container. I put it in uh -oh. like one of those um, those cake pans that have the thing that, uh, the, this quick release oh, cake no. pan. <laughs> so, it went, form, form, so. <laughs> so it went all over the stove and there was just a little bit left over and I was embarrassed but I, I think we ate it that night. I we think it tasted okay ate. but and it your was, oven a, was probably a mess. awful to clean. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, no. I know. No. So we're going to do this in a croissant pan. Okay. And then I have this other pan. And I have to go to a Yom Kippur breakfast tonight and I have so to bring a dessert. So. so we're going to double this recipe. Okay. And, um, and it's really, it's, it's so simple, but basically we're just going to quickly you know, add a little butter. Okay. And you know, what's nice to do that the French do a lot is they not only, they don't tend to flour. You know what? My hands are clean. Go for it. Yeah. Um, they don't usually f uh, necessarily flour their pans because that actually will add a little bit of gluten. Sometimes they do for cakes and things. But for something like this, what they do is they want a little added air. You want? Yeah, I'm going to do mine. Okay. Um, is they actually add a little bit of sugar, just granulated sugar. Oh, and what happens when you do that is you just get a nice little crisp bit. So I'm going to take... You're going to do some sugar now. I'm going to take a little tiny bit of sugar. I want everyone to note that my pan is from Ikea and probably a shitty pan. And her, I'm just jealous of her Le Creuset my pan. My Le Creuset <laughs> pan, I love, I love this. They don't actually make this one anymore, but they make a smaller one. So this is 10 inch. It's like 10 and a half inches. I think they now make a 9 and a half inch. It's technically, this is a, a, a tatin dish. Oh, we have a tatin dish. We do that instead? No, oh, this, this is, is great. fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's what Le Creuset calls it, but I actually use this for everything. I even roast chickens in these. Oh, wow. Amazing. It's kind of just a, and it's also a beautiful color. Yeah, and I also like round things. Right. So I'm not paying a lot of attention because there's, you know, this does not need to be perfect at all. Bring that little bit out. Okay, so, all right, so you put sugar, sugar on there and I should put sugar on mine. So you should put a little sugar on. You and how did you do that? With a spoon or with I, your hands? No, I just went like that, but if you want to use a spoon, you can. Like this? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it gives it a little extra something. And also, you know, oh, another thing. Did you thing put on the sides too or not? I didn't. You yeah. could. I mean, the thing about these dishes is that they're they're rich enough and they have enough, you know, heavy cream and things in them, but they don't usually stick. Right. So this is almost, you know, this is fine. Okay. 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 So now what we're going to do, and we're, we are doubling this recipe, and I always do, even though I know how to do this by heart, I actually do look at it so okay. that I don't screw things up. Uh, but we're going to beat the sugar and we're going to beat the eggs at medium-low speed on the mixer for three minutes. And because we're actually doing doubling it, maybe we'll do five. Five so, minutes of beating? Yeah, five okay. minutes of beating. And by the way, this thing, I don't know if you can see this, this is the whisk. But I never take this off my stand mixer. I don't know what it is, but I love this little thing. 
And this is kind of what you use in France more than the, because they don't cream everything. Too. Right. Okay. okay. Let me, let's, let's, we'll, we'll angle it so you can see. Can it you see okay. it? Okay. Um, and you're doing whole eggs. So you're doing 10 of these. So you can talk while we're doing this. Okay. So 10 eggs because we're doubling the recipe. So yep. I actually, here, I'm going to show you. I use this thing. And these are large eggs. This is the one that I mostly use and because I'm making banana bread with this thing most of the time. Okay. Like, okay. I, I, I have a, 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 an admission against interest here. Like, I don't know how to bake. I, I, this year I taught myself how to cook really well. You cook really well. I, you do cook really well. Well, I always live with someone who was the cook in the house. So I know how to cook through living with partners that were cookers, mm -hmm. that were, that were, <laughs> that were cook cookers, cookers. That, were, that were good cooks. But baking has kind of always been a fear of mine. So that's another reason why I invited really? you over. Okay, because like, so simple. I don't, I'm not a good baker. Banana bread I'm good at with this thing, but not. It takes cake. less time to bake a cake, or at least to get it ready to put in the oven than it does to boil pasta bread. I know, okay, but so got, here's the problem with cakes, uh, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, so okay. we doubled it, it's normally five. Yeah, what's the but the problem with cake, right, is that it's like really, you're always so you finish water. But okay. the problem with cakes is that it's chemistry, right? Like you have to be really exact. And when I'm cooking, I'm super unexact. Right. So, improv. Yeah. So the thing with these cakes is you really don't. Like a yogurt cake, if a five year old can do it, you would definitely okay, do it. Okay, good. All yeah. Right. I, don't, I don't do the, the really fancy things that require, you know, you to have a little tweezer and a little, no, no, no. Right. The cake should be forgiving. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna add sugar, and I need one of those measuring cups. Now sugar is one of those things, and since we're doubling this, we are going to do two cups of sugar. Now, uh, for almost everything else in this um, to measure, so if I'm measuring flour, for example, I will essentially. Um, do the spoon, spoon and measure thing. And that actually is important. So that's the only part that's precise. Do you have a knife? I do. I have a knife. And I'm going to put a little bit of towel on a little bowl too. Uh, no, I need a bowl. Just to like measure over, I don't know. Yeah. I was going to do it over this paper towel. Here's a bowl. This medium sized bowl, is that good? Yeah. And here's a knife. Okay. Actually, I don't really need this. I'm going to do it this way. So what I do when I measure though is I love using these. I do waste a little bit, I have to say, but I just go like this with the back of a knife. We'll get it even. So I guess if that's considered precise. Right, that's precise amount that's of sugar. That's precise. Okay. But since sugar is sugar, you actually don't need to fluff it up before you measure. You don't really need to use a scale. I love using a scale. I think it's so much easier. I have a scale if you need one. No, we don't need one for this, but um, but for a couple recipes in this book, I actually love using the scale because you can just measure and then you just reset it to zero. Mm -hmm. And so you're actually using less dishes. Okay. Two cups in. Okay. And now we, a meter. And Five we minutes. Yeah. A medium. Yeah, medium low for this to start. Oh, and one great thing about like that. mixing. Perfect. Is if you're beating, I usually start a little bit lower and I build okay. a little bit higher. So I'll go from, but this is fine. And then go a little higher after this. And we're doing this for five minutes, right? We're doing this for five minutes. Set an alarm for five minutes. Oh, aren't you good? And I'm adding you. Oh, and I'm adding sugar because why not? Okay. It's not gonna hurt. Okay. It's not long. It's five minutes have passed. We turned off the video, and now we're gonna press stop. Right? Yeah, we are. Okay. And we are going to add um, almond flour and a little bit of salt. I didn't bring salt, but you have salt. I have salt. So yeah. uh, again, because we're doubling this, we're going to do one and a half cups of almond flour. Normally we use three quarters. You can either grind it, you can buy it. And how much salt do you need? Oh, like a pinch, you know, nothing much. And again, I do the same thing with this, which right. is measure and then just basically, you know, with almond flour, you don't want to pat it, but you want it to be a little bit. Tight. Okay, so let me open this up. Here we go. One. And then do this this way. And again, just because it's not environmentally great, but because I am lazy. What's not environmentally great? I use I use paper towel under when I'm baking. 
Oh, I have, you know what I have? I have, you can use these instead. I have like all these. Yeah, no, no, this is good. Okay. Um, one of the things I learned from Thomas Keller is that the best way to do things like peel vegetables is to do it right over newspaper and then you can oh, the throw, throw away the newspaper, away. but now you recycle the newspaper. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, that's good enough. And how much salt? And, ooh, tiny bit. Like, is there a little one in there? There's, this is the littlest one. Oh, quarter you know, teaspoon? Like, yeah, quarter teaspoon is fine. Because we're doubling it. Okay. And I usually do this But the French really do use salt. So like that? Those. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. In things like this, just because it, it, it blooms the flavors a little bit. And, and nowadays we're so accustomed to salt that if you don't have salt in something, it even sweet. something sweet, it's like, what, where is that flavor? Um, okay, so we are going to turn that back on. And which, which um, level? And um, I just like to, you know, just literally for one minute, less than one minute, just I just want to get it a little bit combined. Right. So that when we actually add the flour, that's good. We don't actually need to mix a ton. But again, with this, this is almost similar to a crepe batter in that you can really beat it. Okay. You know, like when I make crepes, I actually just put them in the blender and I get it all like that. So what are we gonna do here? Um, two, 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 one and a half cups of flour. That's okay, easy. so where's your flour? Flour is right here. There. Now, for flour, do you have a spoon? I do. A big spoon or a little spoon? A uh, big spoon. Okay, so the trick with flour, if you're not gonna measure it, is you actually do, I don't know if you can see this, but you actually do kind of fluff it up a little bit before measuring because the difference between measuring flour that's not fluffed and, fl and flour that is fluffed can be as much as you know a quarter of a cup it's crazy so i so i always tell people if you're so not going to weigh it you're basically just trying to loosen it all up so it's not packed and then you're spooning it gently, gently yeah again so that you're not having it suddenly get packed down and I would say that in terms of precision, you know, flour is probably the one thing that you really want to pay a little bit of attention to. Okay, okay. but you're not sifting it, right? You're not sifting Now, what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to put it through the a strainer. Sieve. Yep, okay. okay. So should I take this out? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Uh, and this is not a necessary step, but it's okay, a good Okay, hold on, I want to make sure this doesn't drip everywhere. So I can, let's see, you can take this off first. I'm gonna put this on a towel. There we go. Oh, and then I can do it literally like this. Okay. And then we're gonna do a half a cup. Again, we're just giving it, I've already kind of fluffed it up a little bit. I'm gonna spoon it gently in. By the way, I could do this much. And what, and what kind of flour is this? Just normal? This is actually all-purpose flour. All-purpose flour, okay. And, uh, you know, cake flour in France, or the, or the all-purpose flour that people use in France, is actually a little bit more similar to our cake flour. Mm -hmm. So, it's slightly less protein. Thank you, sweetie. I didn't know flour had any protein. Yeah. No, and that's what actually, so bread flour has a much higher degree. Okay, so okay. that's done. And now I put this thing back on? And then you put that back on? Okay. And I would do this, we're basically folding it in, so I would do this at the lowest. Well, do you want to do it with the other mixer then? No. What, the folding mixer? No, because okay. again, this is not going to get, I'm not worried about this. Okay. But we just want to get it in there. At the lowest speed. Button. At the lowest speed. And here, wait, I'll get, a, um, I'll get a thing to get things off the set. What is this called? Spatula. Spatula. Yeah, I wouldn't even worry about that. Again, this is so okay. forgiving. So we're now going to add milk, cream, and vanilla, and we're going to beat for three minutes. So that's the thing. We are going to beat it. Okay. What happens, however, flour, you know, the formation of gluten, which is what makes things tough, happens right. when flour needs water. Okay. And eggs have water. Egg whites are almost all water. So when you're baking a cake, what you don't want to do is you don't want to have a lot of time where the, where the flour and the water from the eggs are in contact are with being each other. kind of ground together, right? But since this is a like it's almost like a fantastic pudding souffle like thing, it doesn't matter. Okay, so um, I should have memorized this recipe for us. Oh, <laughs> two cups milk and yes, I'm afraid two cups of heavy cream. Two cups of milk. Okay, you have the milk here. I got the milk. I got the heavy cream. And you have and the milk. Milk. Organic milk. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna do. So it is rich. <laughs> Where's the measuring cup? Oh, I got it. Oh, okay. Oh wait, you can put me you can measure liquids in. In, in a solid cup? Sure. I did not know that. Yeah, same thing. 
Is it really? Yeah, I actually think this is two cups anyway. Okay. Yep. I had no Which idea. I thought they were different measurements. Yeah, there we go. Got a little bit more since it's, this actually is two bites. Okay, that's heavy cream. Oh, that's trash right cream. here. Okay. There we go. And two of milk. And you'll see, that's, I mean, that is why it has that almost fantastic pancake like yeah. lightness to it. And give me one more second. I am going to add some vanilla. And is there a special kind of vanilla that you want to have or no? You know, I now for this. Any kind of vanilla. Any kind of vanilla. And you know, you could also, instead of vanilla, you could do rum. Oops, and I'm spilling with this. Here we it's go. Okay, don't worry about it. So this is, I'm using a half here. So this is basically two. Two, okay. And now we want to beat for three minutes. Okay, right. medium speed, yeah. At medium speed, okay. Mm -hmm. And while we're doing that, I can get uh, oh. Okay, so after about three minutes, but you know, since we doubled this, let's do like four or five minutes. Okay. It's looking pretty good. What you want here is you just want a smooth batter-like consistency. So okay. it's it's very liquidy, um, which is good, right? But, which is bad if you put it in the wrong kind of pan. Which is bad if you, you put, put it in the spring form. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and essentially when it's smooth, it's smooth. And just like prep batter, you actually want to let it sit for 10 minutes. Okay, cool. So we're going to turn this off and, and then let it sit. And we'll turn that off and we'll hang out and, you know. Exactly. Not okay. eat. <laughs> and not eat. And not eat. Not even eat anything. Um, but it's interesting. The French have used almond powder, almond flour for so much longer. So what is almond flour? Like, almond, what is it? Oh, almond flour is literally just ground almonds. It's almonds and you can put them in the food processor as long as they're blanched and just grind them into a flour. Really? Yeah. I and what I do if I don't have almond flour and I want to do that is I stick them in the freezer. Yeah. Just for a little bit of time. Not so much to break the food processor, but enough that, that you don't turn into almond flour. Right. Got it. Okay. Right? Just, yeah. Or I can add a little bit of granulated sugar or if I'm doing something savory, I might add a little bit of salt or something so that you're kind of creating a little bit of I have no idea. Almond flour is literally just almond flour is just almond and ingredients blanched almonds. Right. That's it. That's it. So it's healthier. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's nice and healthy, right? Yeah. It's got protein. Yeah. It's great for people who are gluten intolerant, but this also has, has obviously has a lot. So, but then what kind of what kind of protein is in regular flour? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> It just has it. All right. Just, just accept it. Accept it that as part of the world. Um, but almond flour became super popular here with the rise of gluten free right. and you know and the awareness of gluten intolerance in France. It has been around for centuries, just as something you cook with. Right. Cool. Because it's um, and it's also you know nuts have oil, so anything that's made with nut flour is going to be a little bit moisture. You're going to be able to hold on to it for a bit too. Cool. All right. So we can turn this off. Okay, now we're gonna let it sit. And now we're up. gonna let it sit for 10 minutes and chat. All right. All right, so I'm gonna turn the video off again. Okay. And then we're just gonna pour it in and bake it. Okay. Cool. Super. Oh, we'll add some raspberries too. Okay, let's turn this off yeah. for now. Okay. You could have just done it quickly. Now we're lifting this up. And we can take this off. Yeah. Okay. And now we are gonna pour this, and we're not gonna pour it entirely evenly because this is a slightly bigger vessel. I'm going to try and pour it somewhat evenly. Again, a really, really, really forgiving recipe. Here we've doubled it. Boom. Done. And then we just want to put some raspberries on the top. That's it. Just yep. put some raspberries yep. on the top. And you but know aren't what? they going to sink? Uh, you know, you'll be, they'll be visible. Okay. And this isn't that thick, so if they sink a little bit, that doesn't matter. This is really hard doing this on young people where I really want to eat these raspberries right now. I know, I know, right I know. I'm going to say one in front of me, which is terrible of me. Oh my god. Oh. I might just have and to break down and eat a raspberry on camera. No, 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 you can't do All that because right. I will get in trouble. Okay. <laughs> God will get, God mad, will at get mad at me for tempting you. 
So you're just like putting them sort of evenly around, That's plopping so them in there. One. It's very satisfying, I have to say, Isn't plopping it? these I in know, there. I know, and then you go. So, and you can do this, honestly, with almost anything, right? I've done it with peaches, I've done it with nectarines. Um, if you want to do it with apples, what I like to do is I like to just saute them in a little bit of butter and sugar first, kind of sliced up. Mm -hmm. Just because apples actually, oddly enough, do take a little while to cook. Um, pears, you can add cocoa. There's a recipe in the book love for chocolate and pear clafouti, which is just heavenly. Um, I think I've stolen all the raspberries. You need to take the rest of them. I'm sorry. Well, you know what? There, it doesn't matter. Look at that. That's great. Do you guys see it? Oh, yeah. You can't see you it. You can't see it? Okay. I feel very proud of my clafouti okay. right now. And these, these we will. Done. That's, that's it? it? That's yes, it? That's it. Right. So, and it's, it's not like, in a spring form pan anymore, so it's no, not going to leak no, all over my It's like baking. It's basically like baking a giant pancake. Or it's like a Dutch bunny, except, right. it's, except it's more custardy. Okay. So now we're going to so put it in the oven. So oven is 375. Okay, and actually, I'm gonna put your oven so we just gorgeous oven. Okay. I'm gonna slide mine in on this side. Ooh. And you wanna put it high in the high in the oven? Mm -hmm. Or it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. You're on convection. Okay. Alright, so how many minutes are we going for now? Let's start at 35 okay. and check it. Set an alarm for 35 minutes. This is magic. This is like the exciting thing of, of technology. I know, I need one of those. Yeah. All right, that's, that's it. it. And then we get to talk some more. Doesn't even take that much. And we get to clean up. Clean yeah. up and clock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it has been, we checked at 35 minutes. So the clafouti looked like it was starting to be golden brown, but the top was, the kind of middle top was still a little bit wiggly. What you want is you want to see it just set, which means that it doesn't, it doesn't jiggle, doesn't wiggle. Wiggle, move. It doesn't wiggle, jiggle, whatever it is. <laughs> so we added three more minutes. Okay. And now it's done. And you can see, because when you're pulling it out, it's actually it doesn't not move. moving. Yeah. So here is one. And you can see how much it grows, too. Okay, so I'm going to press this a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely oh, nice careful. and hard. Super, super hot. Put it on a hot plate. Gorgeous. The line in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's definitely set. Right, so we're gonna turn this off. And this is the color you want. You want that, um, it's like a little gold. It's a little more gold on the edges. So I was gonna print, lift it up. And here. you can see actually the cherry, the um, raspberries don't entirely, they sink a little bit, but then they kind of also Can you come see back that? There it's beautiful. Go. There we go, look how pretty that is. Oh my God, I'm so excited. And I would say it rose, oh my God, it rose at least what, an inch and a half? A lot, yeah. yeah. So okay, you so definitely don't want to, you don't want to cook this in like a quiche pan, for example. No. Which right. is super, super thin, or a tart pan. You want or the pan that, that we were going to use over there, which right. would have been Yeah, you want something with a little bit of thickness. Right, because this is about like, I would say two inches thick, maybe even? Um, three, three, I would say that's three. Okay, so now here's my question. I'm bringing this to a Yom Kippur breakfast yes. today. Yes. How do I cut it? Like, do I just cut like that? Well, you like, know what? I use a, I just use a big spoon. Oh, so just put a spoon yeah, in yeah, there and people it's just custody. squirt it. Oh. Yeah, you just you want like a big serving spoon and you just like take a little bit. Of it. That's delicious. Yeah, okay. no, no, no. And you can don't put it in the fridge. Don't put it in it the fridge. Will, its texture will uh, be destroyed. Okay. Don't put it in the fridge. You hear that, everyone? Don't put it in the fridge. <laughs> um, what you want to do? Ideally, you want to have it still warm. Doesn't matter. Well, you know, I mean, the, the, the breakfast is at 6, it's now one twenty, and it'll be warm. I need one of these sifters. I love this. I don't have one of these. It's great, right? Yeah, I know. I just use a little tea thing. I'm a tea drinker, so I always have these. So, normally you would do this probably closer to the time of serving. Right. But it looks so pretty we're doing it now. Okay. And why not? And totally optional. And yet, if you're, so from the book, if you're doing the chocolate and pear one, you could do this with a little bit of cocoa as well. Nice. And mix cocoa, boom. I love powdered sugar. And powdered sugar hides all flaws. <laughs> That's beautiful. And there we go. Done. Okay, that was like the easiest dessert. It's so easy. I've ever made. And wait, but isn't that the whole point of your book? Like these yes, they're all easy okay. desserts. I promise. All right. And I actually like, you know, because we're filming it. I was a little bit more like, okay, I've got to make sure I'm doing it right. Okay. But it, it was took easy. a little bit longer. It, it can literally take five minutes. All right. Um, Done. Thank you. Oh, love you, honey. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. We each have one too. Yeah, it's great. So easily doubled. Definitely easily doubled. I, it's <laughs> almost the end of the day. I am going to eat and break my fast with this clafouti. It's not your fault. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing of my own free will 
to break my fast with this. Coffee. It's almost time for you to break. It's your almost time. Okay. okay. So we need dessert forks or spoons? Spoons. Okay. It's like baby food. Okay. I mean, it's like sophisticated. Here's your spoon. Food. Okay. So now what do we do? Okay. You so you it? actually serve this like this, right? So I mean, you could serve it with a knife, but why would you? Because oh, I need a pot holder. Like, hold on. A pot holder. Uh, yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Here it is. Or I can use this. This is fine. Okay. Um, so basically, you're just scooping it out, and you can, you can, this is, a, the first one is messy, so I will eat the first one. Oh, I'll take it. Or it doesn't have to be messy, but it's messy. Oh my god, this looks so good. These are slightly bigger pieces than usual, but basically. This looks so good. It's heaven. And if you look at, I'm just going to do it this way. If you look at the oh interior, isn't it great? It's like custard. If you look at the interior. Basically, you're talking about, and you, and you can see it sinks down a little bit, so it's very puffy when you take it out of the oven. Don't worry, it is supposed to collapse a little bit, and you'll just get lots of raspberries and lots of custard in it. It kind of combines the best things about a so, Dutch baby and a tart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like if you were to, I mean, it's essentially like a baked custard. There's a great Italian, uh, what is it called, sfumato, or I'm forgetting what it's called, but it's basically like a, a puffy ricotta savory thing that's so good that's like this. Mm. Mm. It's, so good. it's so good. It is so good. It's so good. Now, you could add cassis to this, you could add rum to this, you could add cognac to this. You don't have to use vanilla. You could do pear and cardamom, wow. which would be really good. Um, you could do you could do strawberries and you could add tarragon, basil. You could wow. do rosemary and, and um, apricots. Actually, could be kind of cool. Oh my god. What about um, figs? Like you, you could like, totally do figs. Yeah, like, oh. like sliced figs. You could do figs. I would actually cut the figs in quarters. Right. Oh my god, yeah. that'd be amazing. That would be that's incredible. Uh, you just want them to be ripe. If they're not super ripe, then I would stick them under the broiler for like a minute and mm -hmm. just get the sugars to rise. And um, and as I said, for apples, you want to just saute them a little bit. For pears, same thing. For apples, I would do Calvados. For pears, I would do Four William. What's Poir William? Poir William. What's Poir William? William? Oh, it's oh, Poir? Poir William. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it belongs my accent. Um, and what else would I do? Oh, you know what? You could even do like little mandarin or clementine mm. pieces. You For could the add, winter. Yeah, you could add a little bit of Grand Marnier. You can basically do anything. Oh my God. If you make this without sugar, you adapt the recipe slightly. You can do it with cherry tomatoes also. Oh, wow. And do a savory version, which wow. is great. And I should have put that in my book. I didn't, but I can put that on my website because that's actually great. Mm. You guys, mm. this is so mm. good. This is so good. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, and it's like, it's like if baby food were incredible, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like pure comfort. So, oh my God, it's so good. Oh. It's so good. Mm. Mm.